and this is Comedy Crash Landing. <laughs> now this is a show where we take local comedians off the gritty comedy streets of Detroit and they crash here and uh, just chill out, relax, and uh, are themselves for a while. Uh, and with me as always, I've got Matt Ravenscroft. Thank you, Douglas. And Matt and I just spent a week together camping uh, and that explains why we're rocking these really delicious tans. Yeah, pretty it makes tasty. Makes us look really delicious. Pretty tasty. Now, are you getting a lot of fan mail since uh, you started the show? Uh, yeah, I'm getting a lot of fan mail, mostly from my bank, and uh, you know, like. Is the word "delicious" used very often? In uh, not as often as I'd well, like. Well, that's going to change. Oh. That's going to change. It's going to spike right up. Wow! Thank you. Okay, and today we also have a studio audience. Can I hear from the studio audience? Yeah. Several, a couple hundred people. Nice. Yeah. Listen to them. Uh, and with us, we have our frequent guest, Joel Fragamenti. Thank you very much for having me, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Joel. Good to be here. And I say frequent because we did, this is only our third show, but he was on uh, a show that got canceled due to the weather. We had a power outage, so it's actually our second show. It was our, it's our second try so, at this, yeah, so, you know. God did not want could, us to talk to Joel that night, and yes. he put a kibosh but on if, that, but, but if we here. could recapture what we had <laughs> yeah, for those magic. seven minutes before yeah. it went dark, it this is going to be tremendous. The most fiery 15 minutes of our lives, I think. It was, it was great. I loved it. Now, Joel Fragmenti, if anyone uh, doesn't know, he's got an alter ego as Upchuck the Clown. Yes. Should no. I show people yes. what Upchuck the Clown is? Explain what Upchuck would, uh, does. Uh, Upchuck the Clown. Like, this is Upchuck the Clown right here, for those of you that don't know. And uh, tell people what Upchuck does. I don't okay, want to talk about myself. Okay, he's the, <laughs> for, uh, the group in San Clown Posse. Yes. They have a gathering, which is a Woodstock-like event every year. And they uh, have a bunch of tents with different events in them. And one of them is a comedy tent. It's not all music. There's a comedy tent. And they get pretty big acts. They've, they've had Cheech and Chong. They've had uh, Gallagher, they've had uh, uh, Bobcat Goldthwait. Sure. And Joel runs the tent as the MC, and you yeah. work with the guests. As yeah, well, I, hope, I, I host the comedy shows, I run the tent, stuff like that. Uh, you know, just keep the thing going, you know, MC it, and, and, you know, just warm up the crowd a little bit for the guy. Because comics are very nervous about going to that event and yeah, doing stand-up, as you can imagine, because, <laughs> you know, it's a weird place to do comedy. And it's in the middle of the night, and it's in the middle of the world. Yeah, I'm looking at the schedule for uh, the gathering, which yeah. is this uh, coming up weekend is uh, the as 17th we're taping gathering. This year, yeah, in July. And uh, right as we're taping this, yep. and uh, the schedule starts at midnight. That's uh, well, the, the bands are from six to midnight, but the, all the special events they're the later in the midnight, night. Yeah, yeah. And then there's a 2 a.m. and a 3 sure. a.m. Yeah. So we start, you know, I don't know when it's scheduled. It usually starts around one thirty, maybe a.m. Yeah. So it's 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 weird that it's at late, you know. But it's not hot. That's I think one of the reasons they do it like that is so it's not a hundred degrees. Has it always been that late, or did they shift? It? Well, you know, people are watching, you know, ICP and Twisted in these bands from you know eight or six to ten. So there's no point in putting on a comedian that like no one's going to sure. watch. So right. we do it afterwards. You know, it's sort of the after thing. You know. Once everyone's all, you know, exhausted from m being in a mosh pit for six hours, right. they sit down and watch, you know, comics tell jokes. So, yeah. And uh, the there is a juggalette, uh, uh, what would you call it? A <laughs> what, what do you call it? I don't uh, know. Miss Juggalette. Miss Juggalette. There's a Miss Juggalette, juggalette. <laughs> Miss Miss juggalette, juggalette pageant contest. at the gathering, that's yeah. correct. And things like I used that. to be the host of that. I, I haven't hosted that in a while. And Ron Jeremy used to do that. And Ron as Jeremy well. has been there as well. He's been involved in it. He's but now in that's a feminist thing. And I don't know if there's anything to do with hat. Ron, but yeah, he's. Uh, <laughs> it's totally changed now. It's all feminist Ron, running it. It is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Things evolve over time. Let's just say that. But, but yeah, Ron has been there, and he ran. Uh, he was the host for some of the events for several years. Uh, you know, I've hosted that event. And yeah, sometimes I guess in in the past you could say that it was not, you know, it was not the definition of a feminist event. You know, it was more like you know mud wrestling at the strip club more than it was you know the Miss America pageant. But it's changed, and that's a good thing. So, the audience, I think they're applauding. I think they're applauding for Miss America is what they're applauding. Absolutely, for. they're patriots. It could be mud wrestling, patriots. but not our degenerate friends. That wouldn't come. So now it, it like kind of turned into an empowerment event for the you know what? I, sort of. I have nothing to do with it, so you know okay. it is what it is. Yeah, they, let's they, drop it. I, that was an event that I graduated <laughs> we'll from. 
I'm now in charge of the comics. I mean, I always okay. sort of have been too. But I do. I wear a lot of hats at a thing like that. You kind of have to. So you know, we have a big crazy event with all these people, and then you know it's like me, and they're just like, "Well, send the clown up there. He'll be funny." <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like you know, if you're watching, uh, you know, a comic, or if you're watching, you know, we do a Fago drinking contest. That, that yeah. that's happened where guys are throwing up red pop all over the stage. Oh, you know, and I have to, you know, it's it's mayhem. I, I do what I can. It's a lot like this show. You never know. Jack you just of all come, trades. You, just you come in and you just and, uh, do whatever it needs doing. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So the gatherings have been going on for uh, 17 years. It's it says 17th. here. It's my. Mm -hmm. I think it's my 14th. You're 14th. Actually working with them. Yeah. So you yeah. didn't start the character of Upchuck the Con. No, the, the, the story about that, because people, you know... We talked about this last week. Well, people yeah. always ask me, you know, how did you get into it? And it was like I was doing comedy, and uh, there was a friend of mine, a guy named Bill Hildebrand, who uh, was one of my mentors in comedy. And Bill said to me one day, uh, uh, I got this uh, email from these guys. They want somebody to be a clown. I think it's better for you than it is for me. That's what he told me. And I said, well, okay, well, send it to me. I, I'm, I'm looking for work, you know. And then I get home. He didn't know who it was. And I get home. It turns out it's Insane Clown Posse that's looking for a guy. And I go, well, I'll get a good story out of this. Let's see if they, you know. And I write the guy back, and we agree on a price. And uh, I went out there to do it once and said, I'll do this. This will be, you know, I'll do it one time. I'll get a good story. And that'll be it. You're and just so damn good at it. 14 years later, they won't let me leave. So, <laughs> Actually, I think they're probably waiting to kick me out. But either way, I'm still there. So, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been fun. You know, it's, it's a weird gig, but I don't mind, you know. Do you get an RV when you go? Are you tent camping? It, uh, you, um, is there a VIP the, area? The, the festival has moved over the years. So there's been times when I slept in a tent. There's been times I slept in uh, sort of a trailer. I've slept on a tour bus. Uh, I'm staying in a hotel now. So, oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. I, I'm telling you, I've moved Good up. Deal. Thank yeah. you very much for nice. sitting in a hotel <laughs> after 14 years of doing it, finally. <laughs> but it, sometimes, uh, because the festival sometimes was in such a rural place, there were no hotels. Right, right. We were in Cave in Rock, Illinois. You ever, you, you know, we're Cave in there. Rock, Illinois. No, you never, no sounds, one's ever been there. <laughs> Nobody it's, does. It's, it's, it's just <laughs> nothing's there. So, you know, when we were there, we had to make do with accommodations, but. Uh, Okay, so there have been a lot, of, as I said before, a lot of big names, and sure. one of them was Bobcat Goldthwait. Bobcat Goldthwait, yes. He's been all over podcasts. He's got this story yes. about you, and yes. I'd like to finally get your side of the story because it's not <laughs> as flattering. Bob? He kind of okay. takes some digs at you. No, 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 no. Bobcat's great. I love the guy. He tells a story about uh, when he came, I gave him a tour of the grounds of the festival. I, had a, I have a golf cart, and I, I kind of you know used that to you know, move the guests from their area to the stage or whatever. And uh, I took him for a tour because we had some time to kill. And uh, he was very worried about violence. And, right. you know, yeah, I told they, him they have a reputation. I told him there wouldn't be any yeah. violence. Everything's going to be fine. And, Just you to know, calm him down. Him yeah, and we, we were having a great time. And then out of nowhere, like, a can of soda or beer came and, like, hit me in the face. Which, you know, was, I don't know why that happened. Uh, but, you know, in his mind, this was the most ironic. And look, he's a comic. It's ironic sure. when I tell you nothing bad's going to happen. And then that guy, five minutes later, is hit in the face. Right. Uh, and nearly knocked out. It was, was it knocked out? Yeah, the story wasn't all bad. I, I think yeah, his, he, his focus was on how casual you were about it, yeah. but the ironic... Well, Turn yeah, it. it's ironic, and he uses this story. And I'll tell you, he uses this story. I think the first time, I think you've heard it, uh, yes. where he told it on Dan Harmon's podcast. Yeah. Joe Rogan. And, 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 and Robin Williams was there with him, and then Robin uh. Williams played Upchuck for the story, which was oh, an right. honor to me. So I can <laughs> You've say, been played by Robin, Robin Williams. Williams. Someone in this building has been played by Robin Williams. Idea. There you, you go. go. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Our great audience. <laughs> The That's late so Robin steep. Williams did an impression of me the and edge. then died. Yeah, that was it. I'm he done. said, I'm doing impressions of clowns. I'm going to hang myself from the closet. Oh. That's too dark. A little dark. A little dark. I apologize. You want to pull back from but that the one. Bobcat, you know, now Bobcat tells that story. I saw. I know a guy who saw him. He's telling that in his live shows. So if you go oh, see Bobcat do comedy, likes. he has that story in his act because it's so good. And uh, people have said, oh, you must be mad at him. But no, I'm not mad at Bobcat at all. He's a great guy. Really funny comic, and uh, I, I had a great time with him, and he got a good story out of it, and uh, so uh, we, everybody wins. You know? There you go. Now we're here. 
and the comedy crash landing. Bobcat will be here any week now, guys. Yeah. Just keep it up. You're almost there. Yeah. You're going to be slightly trajectory. up. You're slightly up, you know, with me. And then Bobcat will be here. Now, I've heard you have a good Gallagher story. Is that? Well, Gallagher yeah, Gallagher way, came. And everybody everybody knows Gallagher from the 80s, right? The guy the crushing sure. the watermelon. The watermelon. Well, Gallagher's the not... You know, Gallagher's not doing great, let's be honest, right? It's, yeah. it's 2000. It was probably 2013 when Gallagher was with us, and uh, maybe 2012, I forget. Only about but, 20 uh, years after his yeah, last Yeah, after his peak. <laughs> and, you know, Gallagher sort of has a reputation for not being very well-liked in comedy. I don't know if you really? know that. Really? No, but I yeah, did not. I like, we're getting the inside scoop. Yeah, school. Gallagher, oh. not a guy yeah, that everyone school. loves, and Gallagher came up. But I was a fan because I knew him as a kid, you know, watching yeah, yeah, those yeah. specials on cable and stuff. And Gallagher came out, and I was excited to have him. He comes out a day early and says... Uh, I need to see what this event's going to be like. I want to see if I'm going to be good at it. So I say, all right. And he's there a day early, and he's walking around, and he's telling jokes. And I think Gallagher got into the spirit of the festival a little bit, if you know yeah. what I mean. Oh. You know? <laughs> yeah, he kind of partied a little bit. A like little he bit. said, I'm going to be a juggalo for a few days here. <laughs> and he was partying. And, you know, Gallagher's got heart trouble, and he's not doing well. You yeah, know, so. Yeah. Uh. so anyway, time comes for Gallagher, and everyone's excited for him to be there. And there's a thousand people in this tent, and I'm waiting. You know, again, it's getting your one o'clock. And the juggalos don't need the protection; they're just let the no, water no, on them. Yeah, they're not wearing the plastic getting hit with things, yeah. you know, so, That seems like it's right uh, up their alley, yeah. you know. So, so I, you know, I'm getting ready to start the show, and I've been seeing Gallagher for two days. I know he's there, but it's almost <laughs> showtime, and there's no Gallagher. Uh oh. And I'm going, well, where's Gallagher? Where is he? And people are like chanting for Gallagher. Yeah, his you know? props up and everything. Yeah, well, he had set up all this oh, stuff. He okay. goes to Walmart and buys all these groceries oh, before the okay. show. It's it's a heck of a setup. Anyway, so I'm looking for Gallagher. So I go, where's Gallagher? So I go, let me go looking for Gallagher. I don't know. I'm walking around and see where he is. <laughs> and I see a rental car, and I go, oh, man, this is a rental car. And I, I walk up to it, and it's kind of like, and I'm like, I look in, and I see Gallagher laying back, and I go, oh, my God, Gallagher died at the <laughs> gathering of the Juggalos. <laughs> And I've got a thousand people in a tent waiting to see this idiot. <laughs> and, and I'm going, well, Gallagher's dead, and there's not going to be a show, and then they're going to kill me yeah. because Gallagher oh, yeah. died. So I'm like knocking on the window, Gallagher, Gallagher, as if he wakes up. <laughs> Gallagher, we got a show in five minutes. Are you ready? He, he walks out, he's wearing like a Hawaiian shirt and like board shorts, no shoes. <laughs> He gets out of the car, he stumblings out of the car, goes in the back seat, grabs the mallet, and says, let's go. <laughs> so I, That's all I need. Yeah. So, I, so here's Gallagher, who's waking up from some sort of hangover, his stupor, with his mallet. And he literally walked to the stage. You know, he walks there, and I go, ladies and gentlemen, Gallagher. And he just walks up, and he did like an hour and 30 minutes of a show. Oh, my God. Just coming out of whatever coma he was, you know. <laughs> and he was, was good to go. Like he'd he was fine. Well I mean, it was the same lame show he always does, but <laughs> people loved it. But he, I tell you what, though. He was literally into it in his sleep. He was <laughs> <thing laughs> literally in his sleep. As much as, like, I, you know, everyone said he wasn't a nice guy. And, yeah, he was a weird guy. He let me, out of respect, I think, for me, because I helped him out in that situation, because who knows, he probably wouldn't have got paid right, if he doesn't right, do the sure. show or whatever. Uh, so he let me smash the first thing on stage. He handed me the mallet and said, "Up, Chuck, you get to." Oh, the honorary the first thing. Wow. Yeah, so I was the first guy. Wow. So I can now say that I've smashed things with Gallagher. So, excellent. Robin Williams did an impression of me. I smashed <laughs> things with Gallagher. <laughs> and best hey. is yet to come, Charles. Best is yet to come. That's my that's feeling. My feeling is uphill from here. Crash landing. It's just. I'm telling you. No, not, you're not yeah. all about up, Chuck. You've no. done other gigs, and uh, you have a worst gig ever story. Yes, I did the worst gig ever. I think this is the, because people say Gathering of the Juggalos must be the worst gig. Okay, I'm going to tell you the worst gig I ever did. Uh, I got a call from a guy, and he said, I need an opening act uh, for a Christmas party. Now, when you do comedy, Christmas parties are never good gigs, because, you know, no one's really there to see comedy. They yeah. just want to drink. They're and probably drunk. Blow yeah. off yeah. steam and whatever. And I said, all right, I'm good, you know, and I was, I was a new comic. I was two years in, maybe three years in. And uh, I said, well, where is it? He said, uh, it's at the Home Depot in Flint, Michigan. Oh, there you go. <laughs> and I go, how are they going to do? Where are we? And he goes, well, just go. We're getting paid. Let's go. So we drive up there together. We get there. They've set up a stage at the end of the lumber aisle in nice. Home Depot. Out of lumber? <laughs> Out of lumber. Imagine, imagine where they get the lumber for that. But you're in a Home Depot with a little, like one of those podiums. You ever see those podiums that people talk oh, yeah. in? Right, and there's a yeah. little mic. Like, not made for entertaining anybody you know 
and uh, like and of course, podium. There, well, the, the the people there, the employees are seated in those you know ground tables. You know, like people would eat a buffet. You yeah. know, so they're from the back of Home Depot all the way to the front, and we're at the back with this little podium mic. Like people are eating food, and we're in like we're covered in sawdust because we've been waiting around for them to have us. It was the you know, and the ceiling's fifty yeah. feet high. And you have this little podium mic. Acoustics not good. Nobody, yeah, terrible <laughs> acoustics. Nobody cared about us. It was the worst gig you could ever possibly do, I think. I think that tops it all. Just complete indifference, <laughs> yeah. you know. I mean, yeah. I would have rather been hit with something. Than at least they know they're watching. <laughs> at least you they're know? paying attention Yeah, at least they the picked the time of, to, the have to look at me to do that. But, yeah, you've never done a worse gig than the Home Depot Christmas party. In Flint. In Flint. <laughs> if it wasn't bad enough, you're in Home Depot. Now you're in Flint. Okay, now, Joel, you also have a comedy class. That yes. You teach, and you I have do. Ongoing, and there's some students. I have my audience. comedy students here. There's my Hi, comedy students. students. There they are. <laughs> Learning all about how to rock public access television. That's today's uh, lesson. Yeah. But I teach what's called the advanced comedy class over at Mark Ridley's Comedy Castle. It's for students, uh, people who've done comedy for a little bit maybe a year, two years, or six months, whatever, and they want to sort of learn how to do it for a living, you know. We have a beginner class there, and that is for learning how to, just putting a set together, like coming in, blank sheet of paper, I've never done comedy, teach me how to do it, that's the beginner class. And then you get into my class, which is the advanced class, and I teach people how to MC, how to, oh, okay. uh, you know, host shows, how to put together their own shows, how to, um, what else have I taught you guys? How to run a show, you know, uh, tips on writing, performing. You know, there's a way you have to how stand to on cuss. stage. How not to cuss every other word. Yeah, how not to cuss. Like, <laughs> but you have to stand. You know, people don't think about where you stand in comedy. It's very important. Sure. And uh, What I to tell do with people, your arms. What to do with your arms. How to look professional. Sure. It's not about just being, you know, being funny. It's about being professional. People yeah. will treat you that way, yes. So, um, yeah, so that I've been teaching that. I really enjoy no, that. That's a few times a year. You've got one going on. Yeah, I have now. one now. Yeah. Usually they run for about six weeks. If you're interested in taking a comedy class, call Mark Ridley's Comedy Castle here in Royal Oak, and uh, we'll get you going. Yeah, it's great. I, I really love that. I really love teaching. And, uh, and then we go out and do shows together. We do uh, sort of field trips where I take the comics out to open mics. I've done so I, can, open mic, I, can, yeah. I can, you know, make notes <laughs> about them and stuff. And, and sometimes you do these open mics, and they're, you know, they're, they're not as bad as the Home Depot Christmas party, but, like, I think the last one we were at, one of my students was on, and a guy at the back of the bar started playing skee-ball. Right. While the guy's on stage telling jokes, you can imagine this guy and the bells going off, and he's up there trying to tell jokes, and you know, it's I kind of a mess. But I get, I see, you know, when I see a comic in front of people, I learn a lot more about them than just performing like to an empty room in comedy class. So. For sure. My prediction yeah. is the new open mic hack joke is going to be chasing a Pokemon. Chasing a Pokemon, know, yeah. yeah. I was going to close with that, that today. Was. Thanks, Doug. <laughs> I ruined my Pokemon bit. <laughs> Darn it. You're going to see tons of that. Yeah, oh, I think yeah. Pokemon is, but it, you know, jokes change. I think you know, there's always started, yeah. There's always one like hack. Like when I got started, you know what the hack joke was? Was uh, everyone would do an impression of the crocodile hunter. This is when I started really? in the late 90s. Wow. You remember, the blimey, <laughs> there's a big crocodile over here. Let me poke it, you know, and then hey, they that's would not do bad. Yeah, that's well, not yeah, bad. believe me. I, no, no, no. Is that your ending? Yeah. <laughs> that was, that was your and then, <laughs> but see, what happens is then he dies by, you know, some stingray kills him, and now you can't do the right, crocodile hunter. Right. So everyone does <laughs> Although a Although you downer. could do an it's impression of a stingray. Of the, well... <laughs> You take the class. We'll work, <laughs> yeah, we'll work on it. We'll work on it. It's pretty good right now, but Thank we you. can make Thank it you. better. We can make it better. I got it. <laughs> but yeah, so the, the the hack joke always sort of changes. You know, there's always one uh, at the time. You know, I mean, you want to talk about the Bernsteins? That's the big right. one. You know, the Bernsteins, the lawyers you see on sure. TV every minute. Oh, right. And the guy's got the wacky eye, and everyone makes a joke about they took the blind guy and they turned him the wrong way. And, you know, it's... Some yeah. guys just go for... <laughs> yeah, and then you see that. You see 50 versions of that joke on any given night, you know, so... But see, that's why they're hack jokes. Everyone laughs. That's sure. why they work. That's why people yeah. do them. But we yeah. want originality. I don't do hack jokes, except here. <laughs> <laughs> Only on television when you see me... When you see me at a club, I'm completely original. So now see, you're kind of a Renaissance man. You also have a podcast. Yeah, with Corey Hall, who was until just recently the film critic for the Metro for Times. Metro Times, and he was the film critic for Fox too. So we've got right. uh, you know he's got some credentials as well. Yeah, I was the first comedian that ever did a podcast. Yeah, it's been going on anywhere 11 in years, the world. Eleven, 11 years, years, 2005. Yeah. Very first guy that ever did one. 
first game. And I was, well, you know, this <laughs> like Leonardo da Vinci. Here. I don't know how to take it. <laughs> I'm so used to failing. Uh, but yeah, the podcast is great. It's just uh, me and him sit down and we uh, we talk about whatever's happening in our lives. We review a lot of movies, as you know, Corey's good at right. that. Oh, yeah, and, and uh, uh, like the first show you do right after you, know, you go through your movies of the year. That's yeah, we do good. our best movies of the year. Uh, we do a show. We do a show. I'll, you know, we do a show called the A Holes of the Year, where we talk about the worst people of the year, <laughs> hmm. and uh, that's our big spectacular. We get excited <laughs> for that one. But it's just whatever happens to come up. We have a lot of uh, guests on there, comics, whoever's interesting to us. You know. Uh, then your last podcast, you completely bashed the ghost, new Ghostbusters. <laughs> yes, I now did. You a... <laughs> went out with Corey. You went with an actual paranormal yeah. person. Yeah, I took a guy named John Tenney, who's a, is a uh, he lives here in uh, Royal Oak, but he's a internationally Who might be a good known guest on the Chatty Patty paranormal show. investigator. So John Tenney. He's just a... like uh, Bill Murray's character was in the first. Exactly. Movie. So he's the real life Ghostbuster. He's the so real he went, life Ghostbuster. And like. We didn't like the joke because it wasn't funny, but he was like, you know, when they said that EPC, <laughs> yeah. the, the initials were all wrong. It's not paranormal talking. It's paranormal. And I'm like, oh, it's some other made-up term. Okay, whatever, <laughs> you know. But, yeah, John's, John's a great guest. He's a very frequent guest of mine, too, on there. So, yeah, go to joelradio.net. Listen to that. It's on iTunes. It's on Google Play. It's great. So you thought the, the new Ghostbusters fell a little short? Yeah, it wasn't good. Yeah? It wasn't good. You know, usually when they reboot these movies, they kind of do them well lately, right? Yeah. Jurassic Park was good. Star good. Wars was good. Mm -hmm. Ghostbusters, no good. No, I did get some good reviews, though. Like you say today, they're yeah. not great, but not, you, know, you were saying, worst movie ever. People want it to be good, and I get that people want it to be good. I'm fine being disappointed. Like you in want it. Bill Murray to be funny. Yeah, Bill Murray's in this the... movie, and he stinks. He's not funny at all. Uh, it's too bad. I wanted it to be good. Fun. Like, I paid my money and go. Because that's the thing. When you're a critic, when you're a professional critic, like Corey was for all those years, you go to the press screening, you go for free. So there it's like, I didn't pay any money. Just I can trash this. You know, who right. cares? But when you pay money, people are more invested in it. It's true in comedy, too. When people do, when people pay money to go see comedy, people like it more. You know, they want to like it more. And when people go for something for free, they don't want, you know, they're just, they could care if it's good or not, you know. I paid to go see Ghostbusters 3D. was right there. No good. Mm. But the special effects good. Special effects were good. I'm, I'm a sucker for that. I'm a sucker for 3D <laughs> stuff flying at you. I like that a lot. So it gets a 2 out of 10 for the special effects? <sighs> I don't know what it gets. <laughs> it, got my, it got my 12 bucks, I'll say that. Uh, we'll that so. um, OK, do we have time for one more story? How much time? Five, five minutes. Five? OK. Five uh, now, uh, yeah. Now, you do have a Jack White theater story. Oh, that was yeah, really that was, good. Well, here's the thing. So I do this I thing. hope it lives up to the hype. Well, I, okay, here's what I... So I, there's a, uh, I, I got called to open for uh, a guy named Jeff Tweedy. He's a musician. He's a leader of the band called Wilco, indie band. Them. I don't know if sure. any Wilco fans here tonight. A couple of Wilco fans. They're all so here. So I got invited. So, so Jeff was starting his solo uh, tour, and he's playing the Masonic Temple. It's the Jack White Theater, the 1,500-seat smaller theater there. And uh, he likes comics, so they asked me to open, you know. And I said, sure, I'll open for him. I like his music and stuff. And it's always weird, though, when you're opening for a band. You're like, it's not right, always yeah. a great gig right. because they're there to see music, and then some, who's this comic up there, you know. Right. So anyway, so uh, I go there, and uh, I'm doing the show, and it's going pretty well, you know. But we're in the Jack White Theater. You know, he gave them a bunch of money to save the theater, right? Jack right, White okay. did from the White Stripes. You guys right, know right. Jack. Mm -hmm. So he gave him a bunch of money for this, and I think it might have been the first event in the Jack White Theater. So I'm doing the show, and it's great, and I came up with this joke before, and I said, okay, it's going great. They're going to love this joke. And I said, uh, it's an honor to be here tonight at the Jack White Theater. Um, it's been a goal of mine. Uh, my new goal is to play the Black Keys Theater, which is a larger, <laughs> more popular theater. <laughs> and they turned on me. They booed uh, me. Not the right demographic. Uh, for those of you that don't get the joke, the Black Keys are like the rival band to him. And um, yeah, so that, that one didn't work. So, but you got to take a chance. But people remember that joke. People now, they see me and they'll go, I remember when you did that Jack White joke at the theater. That was so great. Really? So, yeah. <laughs> you know, they booed it at the time. Now it's becoming this legendary thing that I did. So. Louder booers, but some appreciators. Yeah, well, it's, you know, every, no one's appreciated in their time. Like Van Gogh, right? <laughs> Absolutely. No one, he died penniless. And look at him now. He's still dead. I yeah. don't know what that means, but anyway. <laughs> he says something, something. There's something profound you, in there. I don't know what it is, so... Can I plug this before we go? Yes, is this yes, absolutely. Is if you want to know anything more about ICP, I didn't write this book, but it's called Juggalo, 
by Steve Miller. He's a great uh, writer. He writes about rock and roll. He wrote a book called Detroit Rock City, the history of Detroit rock and roll. He's covered the Juggalos for the last few years. And he wrote this book about, you know, the FBI is going after Insane right. Clown Posse. Yes. Right. And stuff. he's uh, exposed all of the uh, the wasteful, the money they're spending on it, and all of oh, the unfair okay. treatment. It's all in this book. And there's some funny stories, too, about me and some stuff uh, that happens there. So if you want to know more about ICP, it's a very serious book. Uh, about what goes on there, the lifestyle, and uh, if, you, if you're interested, because everyone's fascinated with that. You are, right, yeah. you are, uh, yeah. Yeah. everyone's fascinated. And you're going to be there this week. And I'll be there, be, this week, so be there this week, so yeah. maybe this will be a posthumous show. Maybe they'll hit me, <laughs> this be the last they'll hit me in the head oh. with something else, and then it'll be like we have this, a very special comedy crash have, uh, landing with yeah. Joel yeah. Fregamini's yeah. final interview. Oh, do we have Fago? All right. Uh, that's the diet. I listened to you last time. Oh, it's diet. diet. Well, ICP uses diet Fago. Less because sticky. It's, it's less sticky mm. on the floor, but then this is diet orange, mm -hmm. which that's not a good um, one. Well, I think they use diet root beer or diet cola, but I'll I'll have a taste of this. How bad could this be? You gonna join me in this? Or no, what? absolutely. All right, absolutely. come on, let's have a little fago toast here. Normally, when we do this at the gathering, we throw it on everything, but I think CMN TV. No, would, uh, even though it is the CMN same TV diet, would uh, the, the diet coke. All right, guys. Thanks All for right, having guys. me. Thank on. you, Joel. Thank Thanks you. for joining us. Thank you to the audience. Best audience ever. Oh my God. This is the worst soda I've ever <laughs> How bad does that taste, in all honesty? It, well, it makes with water. It makes a better spray. No, this it's is, not that good. makes a better visual effect. I want to throw that on somebody. It's so bad. This is the worst thing ever. I don't know. Mm. Not too bad. Oh okay. My God. Thank you for joining us. And remember, any landing you can walk away from is a good one. Out. All right, thanks.